Hello boys and girls. Today for math, we are going to use different strategies to find products when one factor is a multiple of 10. We are going to be focusing on answering um, word problems today. So we're going to be using those word problem strategies. So the first question says, there are five boxes of crayons on a shelf. Each box has 30 crayons. How many crayons are there? So I'm looking at this picture and this picture reminds me a lot of a bar diagram because if we look at this right here, I'm going to draw lines to make it a little bit neater. If we look at this right here. Lines right there. We have our five boxes, right? And those are like our five equal groups. Okay, we have five equal groups. Five boxes are five equal groups. And in each box, there's 30 crayons. It's already labeled. So we need to figure out what the top is. And remember, top total. Okay, if I know I have five equal parts with 30 in each, I know I'm going to be multiplying. But let's prove it with our, with our word problem. There are five boxes. That's five groups in each box. Each box of crayons has 30 crayons. How many crayons are there? We squiggle underline the question so that we remember we could always come back and make sure that we did solve the problem. It's asking how many crayons. Well, the answer can't be 30 crayons, right? Because there's 30 crayons in just one box. So how many crayons are in all five boxes? So we're going to use multiplication. Each means we're either multiplying or dividing. And we know that it's not division because we're looking for the total, okay? In multiplication, you're finding the total. In division, we know the total and we're figuring out either how many groups or how many in each group. So five times 30. Let's use a strategy of um, using our base fact. Our base fact is five times three. We know that five times three is 15. Okay. Now, there are how many zeros in this problem? There's one zero, so I'm going to add one zero. In multiplication, we can do our base fact and add the number of zeros. Five times three is 15, and one zero is like multiplying by 10, which is adding one zero to our product, 150. 150 what? The question says how many, those are our question words, how many crayons? So the answer must be with a label of crayons. All right, I'm going to show how we can check our work using another strategy, okay? We could definitely use a number line, okay? I'm going to break apart this problem. I want to use, um, how about the distributive, the, the distributive property, which is the alien method. So, I'm actually going to, Move this up a little bit so I have more room. Okay, I'm going to use a new strategy. So at five times 30, I'm going to rewrite it. Five times 30 is equal to blank times blank plus blank times blank. Remember, we always set it up this way, so it's easy to fill in. So now I'm going to use my alien method. Five. I want to think of five as three and two. So five got split up, 30 stays the same. So I'm going to take 30 and I'm going to write it on all on the second line both times. It's a second factor, second factor, second factor. The five we're not using anymore, it turned into a three and a two. Three times 30. Three groups of three is nine, add a zero, plus two times 30. Two groups of three is six, and add a zero. What is 90 plus 60? Well, I could use write it vertically, but I'm going to just skip count on my fingers, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, okay? The answer is 150. 
I also know that 9 plus 6 is 15 and 0 plus 0 is 0. Okay, did I get the same answer both times? Sure did. I can check my answer. Check, check, 150 and 150. All right, I used two different strategies and I got the same answer. Okay, the next problem that we are going to be looking at says, suppose there were 60 crayons in each box, how many crayons would there be? Okay, so we knew from the last problem that we had five boxes with 30 crayons in each. Now we have, we still have five boxes, but now instead of 30 crayons in each, we're gonna have 60 crayons in each. So I know there were 60 crayons in each box. That's either multiplication, each is telling us we're either going to use multiplication or division, okay? How many crayons would there be? They're asking for a total number of crayons, right? We know we have six boxes. And each box has 60 crayons. Okay, so we're again looking for our total. So we're going to use any strategy. Now I'm going to pick a new strategy so, just so that I can practice them all. I'm going to draw a, um, an open number line this time. So I'm going to draw an open number line and I want to figure out six boxes of 60 crayons. I know that we're multiplying, right? Because we don't, we need to find the total. We don't have the total. So I have six jumps of 60. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oops, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. And each jump is 60. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller so it's not so big. Okay. So we have 60 here. See there. On every jump we have 60. Okay, so now I have to label my number line. We started with zero, plus 60 is 60. Another 60, I'm going to skip count by 12, by six, right? So six, 12, we're gonna add a zero. After 12 comes 18, add a zero. 24, add a zero. 30, add a zero, don't forget about that zero. And 36. Oops, add a zero. Okay, so we got an answer of 360 crayons. Now I'm going to solve this using another strategy just to prove that I'm correct. That was our answer. Circle it so we know what the answer is. I'm going to try another strategy. Let's do the associative property this time. Six times 60. I don't wanna think of six times 60 I don't wanna think of it as 60, I wanna think of it as six times, six times 10, right? And I don't like multiplying three numbers like this, so I'm going to group some. So I'm going to group six times six. Times 10, okay? Six times six, I know is 36. If we multiply that by 10, what do we get? 
36 times 1 is 36 and add a 0. We know that any time we multiply by 10, we're just adding a 0. So 360 crayons. We got the same answer. Check, check. So we know we are correct. All right. One last problem. Adam says that the product of 2 times 50 equals 100. Dan says the product of, is 1,000. Who is correct? And explain. All right. So they're, they're arguing over this equation, 2 times 50. 2 times 50. Does it equal 100 or 1,000? The question's asking who is correct and explain. Well, why don't we just do it ourselves? Why don't we use our strategies? Okay? I think the easiest strategy would be using our base fact. What is 2 times 5? 2 times 5 is 10. We have to be super careful, though, because even though 2 times 5 is 10, which ends in a 0, we can't forget about this 0 right here. We need to remember to add our 0, okay? So our answer is 100. Who said 100? Was it Adam or was it Dan? Now we have to answer the question. Adam was correct, right? So Adam was correct. If you multiply 2 times 50, you get 100. Not 1,000. So we can even extend it and say, Dan added an extra zero to his answer, which is incorrect. That would be a great explanation to explaining why he got it wrong. Okay, that's all we have for today. You're going to be using the strategies we've learned so far to solve um, word problems where a multiple is a where one of the factors is a multiple of 10. So use the strategies that we've learned so far, head on to Pearson and complete your quick check and your independent practice. Good luck.